Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. We have been working on this awesome, this fantastic, Bally Captain Fantastic, and the Brown Dirt Cowboy Pinball Machine from 1977 for a customer. He brought this into us, wanted us to get it going again, and we're getting there. So we have been working on it diligently. If you haven't seen the other videos, you need to go back and watch what you missed. But we did one video where we... Uh, Showed the shape it was in when we got it. We did another video where we worked through the bottom uh, panel, mech panel. We did another video where we did the insert panel on the back and all the score reels and all of that stuff. Then the back glass. Boy, it's awesome, isn't it? And now we're up to the play field. So we're going to take everything off the play field. We're going to touch up the blue down here just a little bit. The rest of it looks pretty good. And then we're going to clean it off, put it back together, and... Uh, See how good we can make it look. It looks like this apron's in really nice shape. There are a couple stickers up here on the, um, um, what do they call these? The plastics, but I don't know, I guess the arch plastics. Um, that they're kind of, that's not the best place for the stickers. It's the tax stickers, but I'm actually going to leave those because um, it's like a local tax sticker, so it's kind of cool that it. Um, shows where the thing was operated. So we're going to leave those on. So uh, we'll still take that off so we can clean under it and everything, but uh, uh, we won't be getting rid of those. Uh, but everything else we're going to take off as well <laughs> uh, and then clean it up and put it all back on. So uh, I'll set up the tripod and you can watch while we take it off and then we'll look at what it looks like afterwards and then we'll put it all back on there. So this is how it looks with everything off the play field. Just a couple issues. There's something going on here. Look at that. What are they doing? Something going on there. That I, I think I know what was going on there. They just had the wrong post. And then there was something weird going on here where the plastic goes over the rail and uh, then had a screw that was kind of airballed there. I don't think that's right. We'll have to figure that out whenever we put it back in. But it, you can see where it's kind of been wallowed out or something. What's that all about? Might have to mess with that. 
Um, but as far as the artwork, everything looks pretty good. So we're going to clean it up. It's going to even look better. Um, the pop bumpers, we're going to replace the bodies and stuff. Um, this one here is split. So these have two leads that go down through the play field on this socket. And then there are two screws that actually hold the plastic together. And this one, since it's split, it's all screwed up. And so if you swap one, you kind of need to swap all of them, but it kind of needs it anyway. See how the, this, see the cracks down in there on the side? And then this one is also cracked. If this one wasn't as messed up as it is, I'd probably leave them. Um, but since you're replacing one, you got to replace all three of them or you'll be able to tell. So we're going to have to order some stuff. We're going to have to order those. Um, and then the rollovers at the top. That's another thing. These are the original ones. They had a little Bally logo on them. Right. So you can get those. Or someone has replaced the other three of them with these, which are a little more standard. So we're, they're all cracked up and everything, though. So we're going to order new ones of those, too. And then the posts. A lot of them are broke. So it's time for new posts. So we're going to have to get new posts for it, too. Not a ton of them on it, but most of the ones that are the tall ones are broke. Sometimes they just split. Sometimes they're fine, but they're just really discolored. So that's what we're going to do. So we got to order those. Uh, but yeah, I got to take the pop bumper caps off, and then we're going to clean everything. I mean, the pop bumper bodies off, and then we're going to clean everything. But you know what I think I'll do first? I'm kind of curious why this is like it is. Why is that there? There's something weird going on here. See how the plywood is cracked and broken there around that? I'm talking about this mark right here. Okay, see the crack all the way around it and everything? And if you look, it's sticking up just barely. So these play fields are plywood, which they do because it, you know, makes them more flat. Plywood's nice and strong and hopefully level. <laughs> But the top ply has cracked, and there's a little hole there. And then there's this, which looks like somebody's ran a screw through it. I believe what may have happened is that that is where someone tried to run a screw from the bottom, and the tip of the screw played peekaboo through the play field, right in one of the worst possible spots. <laughs> so I'm going to lift the play field up, and we'll see if something's going on there or not. Um, that thing, I'm not sure. I can't figure that out. So I'm going to look at some pictures of other ones and see if there was supposed to be something there or what in the world. It could be that this bar originally was there, but that would leave a gap. You wouldn't think it would be like that. Whenever we got it, this was loose and dragging the play field, which is why you have that mark there. So that's what that came from. So let me tip it up and let's see if there was a screw, maybe through the flipper plate, that caused that. Okay. So look at this bottom gate assembly. See the screws? And then look at this flipper assembly. Look how under the corner there's something under there. They've been screwing around with these freaking flippers. We mentioned on a previous video, see the little marks on the plate there where those two open screw holes are? That's because that one was on that side at one point, and that one, see the marks on the unused screw holes? It's because that one was on this side at one point. So they've, they've reversed the flipper plates. Why would you do that? It's because something was worn out on them. So, for instance, if that hole right there isn't right, it's wallowed out, something's wrong. That's right. I've used the word wallow twice in one video. Deal with it, people. We're talking fine woodwork. <laughs> um, 
so like if something's a lot of times at the end of the of the uh, coil you have that coil stuff there the little metal piece with the two screws in it that holds whenever the plunger goes back bang it hits the back of it sometimes those holes get elongated and uh, one way you can fix that is by swapping the two plates because they made they made them uh, reversible so that they only had to make one part numbered uh, even though they're they're mounted on different sides of the play field, okay? So someone has replaced those and if you look very carefully see the mark on the play field where it used to be? And then those screws look right but look at this. See how that's the wrong screw? And sure enough sure as you're born See those two screws? Those two screw holes are right where those two screws are on that plate. So, almost like I've seen that before. They ran the damn screws. They used the wrong screw and ran it all the way through the freaking play field up into the freaking artwork what are you doing people don't do that don't do it so it's like these they must have those look like the right screws I'll pull them out to see but they probably were screwing around with the wrong ones don't screw around with the wrong screws people come on now see look there's another one see the regular head instead of the Phillips head come on people don't do that and if you are going to do it, don't do it on a real high dollar pinball machine. If y'all don't know, this one's pretty collectible. If you make a list of electromechanical pinball prices, and down at the bottom is like something you've never heard of, this one is way up here at the top. Like if this is the most expensive EM pinball machine, this one is about right here. All right. Okay, so, uh, but that, by the way, I've still got the thing turned on. You shouldn't really do that, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay. So that's the proper thickness, because remember, you have the plate. So that's the proper screw. I think they had the wrong screw in there, though, at some point, and then they swapped in the right one. different sizes <laughs> come on now come on now people can't believe they do that the thing with these plates is the only part that goes through the play field is this the bat so you can actually rotate it a little bit if you have to right so it can be there it can be there as long as the bushing still goes through it. So sometimes whenever people do that, they'll move it in weird places. I've had them before where they're like, instead of like this, they'll be like this, where they moved it all the way around. So, I don't know. I think we might do the toothpick trick or something. You can take like a toothpick and put it down in a, a hole that's uh, blown out. And uh, whenever you put the screw in, it'll give it good meat to grab to. You can put uh, putty in it too. And look at this. What the hell is that? What are they doing? Why would they do that? What's that for? That's that rail, so I guess it's all right. Maybe the factory did that one. Okay, so uh, that we solved the mystery. So now we know why it's like that. All right, so I'm going to take these off so that we can get the pop bumpers off. You have to, it's a pain in the ass. You have to take these three screws off, three nuts off, 
take these two nuts off, take the whole thing off, and then you have to unsolder the wires to the light bulbs, and then take the two screws off the top to get the thing apart. But we're going to do that on this one. So uh, let me get those off, and then we'll uh, we'll see about cleaning it all up. So that's what we look like with those gone. It has mylar from the factory around the rings, which is good. People get obsessed with removing this mylar if it's on anything, and uh, that ain't the way to go, people. If it's on there and it just doesn't look horrible, leave it. Just clean it up. If you try to take it off, a lot of times it takes the paint under it. Uh, but it being there has kept that all looking pretty good for all these years. And we're going to leave it there many, many more years. Here they come. They're running right at us. <laughs> okay, I took the rail loose down here. So we can get to those two things. You can see how they're parallel because it's the bottom of that plate we were talking about. Uh... So, the first thing we're going to do is clean everything up. So I've got to wipe all of this down. And then uh, we're going to hit it with a little bit of the magic eraser, but don't go crazy with it. I like qualifying every time I talk about using that with don't go crazy with it. Because if you do what I'm doing, realize I'm just not going to go crazy with it. I'm going to go very lightly with the magic eraser. So, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a paper towel, wet it down a little bit, and then just wipe up a lot of the loose dirt to try to clean it as best I can down here as well. Um, and then we'll see what it looks like after that, and we'll go with the magic eraser. All right, so I wiped it down a little bit. Um... And it's, it's already pretty clean. We haven't scrubbed anything yet. But I just noticed something that you may have noticed already. I've noticed a lot of you have a keener eye than I do. <laughs> um, but it's already starting to look much more fantastic than it did before, right? Let me show you what I just found, which may be the worst mod of all the times. Worst mod of all of the times, okay? So I noticed whenever we got it that they had three sets of rings on the kickers. Now, I have never understood why they do that, but I've seen it before. There were three levels of rings, okay? I've seen that before, never with three. This is the only one I've ever seen that had three sets on it. Sometimes they will do two. They'll do two sets. So, uh, um, yeah, here's a good example. So this is a Flight 2000. Well, let's look. Let's look through my my stash here. So here's a uh, Williams Grand Prix. See how it has one rubber ring around the kickers, and everything pretty much has one rubber ring around it. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how they were designed. But often you'll find them where they've got two. So I've been laying all the parts out on this old Flight 2000 that we're going to be working on soon. Okay, see how this one has two? So somebody has just added a set. It wasn't originally supposed to have two. Somebody just added a, another ring around it, which you can do. And the reason that it's down below it is because there is a groove in the post that holds the ring. See how there's room for one ring? So they put the ring in and then they just put another one below it and it holds in place because this ring is captive, right? So it's got two on it. Now, let me come over here and show you something. I just happen to have a, if I can see it, we might not be able to see it. Yeah, you can't see it, so I won't show you. You'll do without. <laughs> uh, sometimes on the newer machines, they have two rings, the posts will have room for two rings. It'll be designed like that. Okay, so I guess two rings so that if you hit it real hard, it it, uh, yeah, I do have one. You may have seen our The Simpsons. Oh, look at that. The plastic popped off. I gotta fix that. Uh, see how there's two rings on that? It's because it's designed like that. The posts have room for two rings. You can see it a little bit under that one where the plastic popped off. 
there's room for two rings. So they just designed it like that, right? So nothing on Captain Fantastic is designed like that. It's only supposed to have one. I don't know why you would ever add a second ring. Well, in this case, they added three rings. So now it, or they put three rings on. So now it has three rings. No big deal, right? You just take them off, put it back out. It's supposed to be. It is a big deal. Here is a stand-up switch for the ring. So there's one. See there? That's very standard. Okay. They have cut the freaking stand-up switches really low so that it only registers on the bottom ring which I can't put back on unless I put three freaking sets of rings on it. Look at this crap. They cut the damn things down. Why would they do that? What are you doing to me? Now I gotta replace all four of them. I have never seen that. That's the worst mod I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Look at that crap. Why? Why would you go to extra trouble to do something like that? That's crazy. That's nuts. Somebody went through trouble to mod it in a way that makes it worse, and then now i got to go through trouble to put it back. Why would anybody do that to me? It's like some dude 30 years ago decided he wanted to do me wrong. I'm not going to take it personally. Maybe it's better that way, and I just don't realize it. But you know what? I'm never going to realize it because I'm going to replace those <laughs> and put it back how it's supposed to be. Wow, I have seen it all now. I've, I've seen a lot, but I hadn't seen it all till tonight. Okay, so uh, besides that, everything looks pretty good. Another thing over here, there is a big-ass nail in the playfield. So what's that for? Well, there actually is supposed to be a nail there. Not quite like that, but if you, if you look, see that nail? That's factory. That one, too. It's for the uh, plastics. So with that nail there, it's supposed to hold up the plastic. I don't think that we really need it, though, so I'm going to take it out. It's kind of, there's a rubber ring that goes all the way around here. And so they kind of had it there so that this plastic sits on top of that. Um, but it doesn't really need it because it's sitting on top of the thing over here and it's got a good post there and a good post there with a ring stretched between it and you got a switch here stand up switch I'm gonna take that nail out we don't need all that crap that ain't right that ain't supposed to be there <laughs> um, but that's what they were doing this is our light socket that we replaced last time let's see if she works she does work so they had removed that light, or that light socket had burnt up, probably because a ball got trapped back there or something. I don't know. Something. Who knows? Okay, uh, so we're looking pretty good. I'm going to get the magic eraser and clean it up a little bit more. I'm not going to go crazy with it. Um, if you go, it's basically a magic eraser is like sandpaper. So the sheen that you're seeing on here, you will lose all of that if you go nuts with the, sand, with the, the magic eraser. Sometimes you have to, though. To clean it up. This is about as clean as I can get it with just a paper towel. Sometimes wax can get it a little bit cleaner, but uh, usually when you have ground and dirt like this, you have to go a little more aggressive. So we're going to very lightly use the magic eraser and try to clean this up. See, see the the black uh, in the paint. We're going to try to lessen that a little bit so it looks a little better. And just get it looking a little nicer, and then we're going to see if we can touch up this down here where we've got a mess, just to make it look a little bit better. We're not going to go bananas on it, but we want to hide it a little bit. Okay, so I'll get the magic eraser, and you can watch.
All right, so when you do that, it will leave this haze everywhere that you've used the magic eraser. So we pretty much got on everything with it, but we didn't go deep. <laughs> Just hit it once or twice and move on, right? But you can see that it did make that look a lot better. It got rid of a lot of that ground in dirt. You can also see the ball trail at the top there is now very clean. You can't get rid of it because it's through the the uh, clear coat or varnish or whatever you call it on, th on the top, but at least now it's not black, it's white. There's a couple little spots where it was deeper, like there and there, where it's a little darker, but all in all, it looks pretty clean. So that's that. So now I have to wipe all this stuff off, right? So I'm going to do the same thing. Take a wet paper towel, clean it all off, and that should make it look a heck of a lot better than it looked a few minutes ago. Uh, this is also a good time to clean, like, drop targets. So I cleaned those with the Magic Eraser while I had it. And uh, flipper shoes. Some of those had um, little pieces of the rubber still stuck on them, so I messed with it a little bit. And I've got them pretty clean now, but they need to be wiped down again, so... Uh, next cleaning. So this is what, the first, second, third, this, this will be the third cleaning. Okay, so I've been cleaning and cleaning and cleaning on it, and this is about as clean as I can get it reasonably. Um, you can, you may be able to get it cleaner than I can. Cleaning is not my strong suit, but uh, after about three hours worth of work total from how it started to how, where it's at now, this is about the condition that it's in. So, uh, one of the things that you could do a little better probably is you could replace these little white stars. Those get kind of dirty, so they're still a little dirty. Um, but the little the plastic in the play field, you can't really take off because it has art on it. It's going to cause you all kinds of problems. But you could probably buy a new one and just replace the insert. But sometimes when you do that, you break the part that's in the play field. So I don't really mess with it because if I break that, it's going to make it much worse than it is. On your game, though, you might want to. Uh, and we've, I've got everything about as clean as I can get it, and then we're down to here. So how do we fix stuff like this? This is actually a very minor issue. It's just a little tiny thing, just a couple little spots. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna touch up anything else on the play field. You could go around and find all kinds of little things that you could touch up, but you're just opening a can of worms. It, it's just, uh, you don't want the thing to necessarily look brand new. You just want it to look presentable. This looks like damage, and it's going to just going to bug the hell out of everybody that looks at it. So I'm going to try to touch it up a little bit. You're still going to be able to see it slightly, but we're just going to try to hide it a little bit. Now, once we do that, we could also do over here, but you're kind of chasing your tail. Because if you do that, then hey, look, there's something going on here where it's got a little bit in it. So we're just going to basically do that. I might do something over here, but we're, we're, we're not trying to go nuts and redo the whole play field. Um, if it had severe damage in other areas, we'd touch them up too. And one thing to think about whenever you do touch these up is that if you mix colors, there's really not a ton of colors on the play field. So let's count. There's a dark blue and there's a light blue that's almost like a teal. There is a yellow that's all the same everywhere. There's a red that's all the same everywhere. There is an orange that's all the same everywhere. Um, so that's five, and then there's black and there's white, so there's seven. So there's only seven colors on the whole play field. So if you mixed seven colors together, you could repaint everything. But all we really need is the blue, the orange, and I'm going to use a black uh, uh, acrylic pen to make that line back. Um, well, and I guess there's a couple lines there too. Oh, and there's some more there. You can take this all the way off if you need to, um, which we may actually do because of that there. I don't even know how the hell that would have happened. It must have been the old flipper that was on there before they reversed it. So we got a little bit there too. Uh, but how do we how do we touch it up? Well, I use acrylic paint, so just like hobby paint that's really cheap. It's like a dollar a bottle or 60 cents a bottle, 70 cents a bottle. And I have like a whole big box of it, and uh, I've got a whole bunch of different colors, and we'll see if there's a blue that's really close just out of the bottle. But if we have to, we'll mix it up a little better, and then we'll see if we've got an orange that's really close out of the bottle. And that's about all we have to 
mix on this one, so it's very minor. But I'll go grab the paint and show you what we're going to do. You want to use acrylic, which means it's water-based, because if you mess up, you can just wipe it right off. And also, if you use acrylic, whenever you clear coat over it, the colors won't run. Sometimes whenever you use something that's like an enamel based, like a Sharpie or something like that, when you clear over it, the chemicals in the Sharpie react with the chemicals in the clear coat, and it makes a big mess. You can't clear coat it with like anything water based. The, the, the problem with water based is that you can just wipe it right off. So it's not durable in this, um, in, in this, how we're using it, in this use. So you need something with a harder finish on the top of it, like a clear coat. So we're going to touch it up with acrylic paint and then clear over it, just that one little area, literally just this area, um, so that whenever the wax is on it and the ball rolls over it, that it doesn't wear the acrylic paint off because the acrylic paint is very delicate. So, uh, let me go grab the paint and we'll see how close we can get it. So here comes the fun part, which is trying to match the color. Um, on these, the colors fade. So if you look under the flipper, you can see that that's a little bit different than what we can see. But we kind of want to match in the area that we're doing. So that, and, and you're going to be hindered a little bit by the camera here because it's going to color correct everything. Here with my eye, I can see it just slightly different, but that is too kind of vivid. That's called ultramarine, and it's just too in-your-face blue. It's not quite right, but it is kind of the right hue. It's just way too sharp. Okay, so this one is too blunt, like it's too dull looking. Okay, <laughs> now none of these are official words. But if you look at a color wheel, you have red straight up, orange, yellow, green directly across from red, and then blue is down here, and then purple, and then, uh, wait, I, I think I skipped one. Green, blue, purple. Yeah, that's right. Green, blue, purple, red. Okay, so this blue is way over on the purple side. It's got more red in it. Uh, not this one. This one. It has more red in it than this. This looks more like a real blue, right? So that's just a little bit more purple. So this blue is kind of more towards the center of the color wheel. It's not quite as out at the extreme of it where it's real vivid. It's kind of muted a little bit. So what I'm going to try to do is take this you got a couple ways you could do it. You could take this and move it a little more purple by adding purple. But the problem you would run into is you would end up with a really bright blue that was purple. So what I'm going to try to do is drag it back towards the center of the color wheel a little bit with this kind of dark-ish blue. Right? So we hopefully we'll mute it a little bit. Um, we still might not have the where it's not quite purple enough. We might have to add purple in it as well, but I'm basically going to mix some of this and some of this together and see if we get a little closer to that color by doing it. You just have to play around with it and try different combinations. And sometimes you even have to add colors you wouldn't even think. Like if you add the opposite color of blue, so like if it ends up really vivid, the opposite color of blue would be orange, I believe. Red, orange, yeah, would be orange. So if you add a little bit of orange, ironically they have it like that there, if you add a little bit of orange to a blue, what it'll do is it will pull it back through the color wheel. So if blue's over here, orange is over here, if you add orange it makes the blue a little more muted. Just a little bit of orange will mute blue just a little bit if you put the color that's opposite it on the color wheel. So we're going to play around with some stuff like that. So let me see how close I can mix it, and then uh, we'll try it out. So what I'm going to do is mix it together until I get it where it looks about right. When it's wet, it will be slightly lighter than how it will dry. It'll dry just slightly darker. So you kind of want to get it where it looks about right or slightly lighter while it's wet because then it'll dry normal or a little bit too dark. If it's a little bit too dark, that's better than it being a little bit too light.
So if you, if you repaint part of it and the part that you added is too light, it'll stand out like a sore thumb because your brain can't process why something would be lighter on the play field. If it's slightly too dark, it makes it look like it's just worn or old or used or <laughs> dirty or whatever. So whenever, you, whenever your mind sees it, it kind of skips over it a little bit because it's a little bit too dark. You don't even really notice it. But if it's a little bit too light, you go, why is that too light? Your, your brain just notices it right away. Okay, so uh, I'll mix some together and we'll see how close we get to it. Okay, so I took ultramarine blue. Look how bright it is. And then we put our cerulean blue in with it, like we talked about. But it looked too bright. It was also too dark. So not only was it too dark, it was too vivid. Yeah, <laughs> you get what I'm saying. So I added just a little bit of this, a baby blue, just a drop to try to lighten it a little bit. Okay, that did lighten it, but once it was too light, I could tell that it still wasn't quite purple enough. So I put a dark purple in it, <laughs> right? And then it was still too vivid, way too vivid. So I did our trick with the orange and put one drop of orange in it, which dulled it up a little bit and ended up with this. All right. All right. So we are going to very carefully see if it's a good match. I'm going to show you a little technique too. If you've got a bunch of spots where it's like lines like that, you can do like this. You can do like this. Or you can do like that. Boop, 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 boop. Put it right in there. While we're in it, let's go over here. Now, by the way, it doesn't take hardly any of this paint. I mean, you're just going to use a little tiny bit. You could fix this little screw up here with some uh, wood, wood putty or something, but I typically don't mess with it. We just want it to be about the same color. We're not Picasso people. All right, so you can you can actually just paint it like all over the place whenever you have that, those lines in it, like that. And then, it's a little harder to do. You just take a paper towel or something and just kind of drag it off. So you're kind of just smearing it around. Right. So Clay does this on pinball, PB, what's his site? Pinrepair.com. Clay is where we learned how to do almost all of this. And Clay calls that the smear technique. You basically paint it, see, that's a, that'd be a good place to do it. See how that we have that line there from where it drug that little thing? So, you just kind of smear it all over the place. And then you don't really want to leave it like that because it, you can see it. So you take the paper towel and you just kind of blend it in. All right, that made it go away. Now, you may not noticed, but I already repainted all of that before I even showed you. Huh? What do you think? Pretty decent match. I think I might add a little more back to there where I rubbed it off. But you just kind of blend it a little bit. You could do the same thing over here, but like I said, we don't want to go too crazy with it. We don't, we don't want people to notice that anything's been touched up. So I'm just trying to blend that in a little bit and be done with it. Okay? So I'll add a little bit more there where I made it a little bit too thin by dragging it off. And then we'll be uh, ready to do the orange and the black. These are the little black paint pens we use. They probably make them in different colors too. But uh, the problem with anything but black is that anything else isn't going to match what you're working with. So usually you got to mix it or you need 150 different colors. You can see I've got quite a few different ones. So to, to have one out of the bottle that matches is very hard. So unless they make these in like 150 different colors, you're, you're probably not going to be able to get one that just right off the shelf 
uh, matches. Uh, but these are the ones we use. Uh, even white is like that. White, there's tons of different colors of white. You wouldn't think so, but your eye can see it pretty easy. So, uh, um, you, like, we've got about five different colors of white just to get it close to um, repainting the white. So, really, the only one that's effective as a pen, in my opinion, is a, is a black one. Um, so, again, these are acrylic. So it's water-based, which makes it much better whenever you do the clear coat. So that's what you want to go with. If you want these exact ones, they're real cheap. I think they're like 10 bucks or 8 bucks or something like that for a pack of five. Somebody actually sent me these, this exact pack. I had some other ones. I was running low, and I mentioned it in a video, and somebody sent me some of these. So thank you to whoever that was. Your name is lost to history, but your contributions have never been forgotten. Um, so uh, if you want some of these, though, if you want this exact kind, if you go on our website, we've got links to stuff like this and some paints and stuff like that on our parts page. If you go to our parts page at lionsarcade.com, up at the top, uh, we've got all kinds of stuff that we use in our videos on there. A lot of it takes you to uh, Amazon. If you go to Amazon and buy anything on Amazon, like a car or a sailboat or a uh, piano or a set of platform boots, if you do any of that, it gives us a tip because we sent you there because you went through our link. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. So, what do you think? I think it's pretty good from a player's position. Now, if I get down there close to it, you'll see all kinds of stuff you don't like. But remember that bar goes back in there too. And also remember that the flipper covers a lot of that. But all in all, since we're talking about this and we're not talking about that, I think we did pretty good. So the only thing left now, uh, at least for the touch-ups, is to clear coat it. Now, sometimes, here's the trick. Sometimes when you clear coat it, the color looks different once you get clear on it. Not much you can do about that. Especially since we're kind of, I don't like the word restore because that implies that like you're making it perfect again and I, I'm not capable of that. We're, uh, we're repairing it, right? So we're just repairing it. So when you're repairing, you're kind of matching old colors and stuff, and you can't ever get it perfect. But we'll spray a little clear on it and see what it looks like. So for the clear, we just literally use spray paint in a can. We got that on our website, too. Um, and we just touch, we just do a, the spot that we've repainted. So I'm just going to take a spray paint can, go and just cover that little spot. And uh, that will be enough to protect the paint. And then we'll let that dry and then wax the whole play field. And whenever you wax it, it will blend the sheen together. We use like a satin clear coat that'll match kind of the satin sheen of the play field. Um, and then once you wax it all, it blends everything together pretty good where you can't tell. A lot of times if you use like a heavy gloss clear coat, it'll make it where you can see every little imperfection in the play field. Like for instance, that big hole that we didn't even patch, we just painted over. All of that will stand out because the gloss will catch your eye and, you know, you'll just see it a lot easier. So don't use gloss. Use like a satin or something because it's just a closer match to the original finish. Whenever people have the play fields with where it looks like glass, where the gloss is that thick on it, that's really cool on like a modern game. Some of them come from the factory like that. That's how it's supposed to be and that's how it is. But that's not how these are supposed to be. These were never like that. They always had kind of a low sheen finish, uh, and they never had really thick clear that looked like glass. It's just it's not how they were designed. You can do it like that, but, I mean, what are you doing? I don't know why anybody would want one like that. It's not how it's supposed to be. It's nothing like the original game. It'll make it play real fast, so I guess if you want them real fast and you want it to look like a brand new one, um, but not like a brand new 1977 one or 1976 one, so... So, uh, satin sheen, and I'll put it on there. We'll let it dry a little bit and see what it looks like. So this is what we look like with the rail back in. It's probably a little low, but it'll be all right. Um, flipper back on. I think it turned out pretty nice. I put a little wax on it already. You can see how the satin sheen blends in. Once you wax it, you cannot tell where we cleared it. But you can still see, if you, you know, if you know what you're looking at, you can obviously still see the damaged parts. 
and the closer you get, the more obvious it is. But from up here where you play it, not that bad. Um, so yeah, I'm real happy with that. I think it looks good. Okay, so next up, we got to wax everything.
Okay, folks, so this is how it turned out so far. We still got a lot of stuff left to do, but we basically got the play field done. It's looking pretty good. I probably mentioned in an earlier video on these, by this time they had uh, it set up so that at the end of the game, the pop bumpers turn off the, bright, the uh, lamps so that they wouldn't burn the the pop bumper caps. So those, uh, without being able to start the game, we can't get those lit up yet, but if they don't light up, we'll fix it. I put all new bodies on it, new skirts. Um, the front pop bumper was loose. The screws wouldn't hold it down. Uh, so I had to put a slightly larger screw in it to hold it in place. Uh, what else did we run into? Oh, this plastic up here. The Elton plastic. It's the only one with him on it. And it's cracked. The bottom is cracked. So, uh, I've looked and looked and looked. Couldn't find anybody that was selling a reproduction or a used one. One guy had one in England. He wanted, it was something like $70 shipped for the one little piece of plastic. I think not. <laughs> I talked with these uh, customers whenever they dropped it off, and I am confident they don't want me spending $70 for a half inch piece of plastic being missing on that. So we're gonna leave that one on there and I think it'll be just fine. We did have to replace a bunch of the posts as you saw whenever we went through, a lot of them were new. Um, what else? Oh, I put yellow flipper rubbers on it. If you look at all the old flyers, all the Bally games all had yellow flipper rubbers. Pretty much all of them. I looked through a whole bunch. Couldn't find one. That might be a little challenge for you. Go find me a early Bally that had red flipper rubbers. I don't think they did. There might be a couple, but every time I look it up, they had yellow originally. So lately, I've been putting yellow back just to make it kind of like how it was when it came out. Um, of course, all new rings everywhere. What else? Oh, I put new uh, rollover lanes at the top. Had to get those. And so we're waiting on some parts. We we still need our stand-up switches for the kickers. As you can see, <laughs> if the ball were to hit that, it wouldn't even trigger the switch because they cut them off so that only the bottom rubber would trigger it. Why they did that, I have no clue. That makes no sense at all to me, but whatever. I think whenever we get back in there too, we may uh, have to add some nails. If you look at the little holes there, th there were probably nails that were to support this. Maybe. I don't know. I'll look into it. But all in all, I think it came out pretty good. So let us know what you think so far. I, I would play it, but I can't. The thing doesn't work yet. we still got another video to do uh, repairing it. Uh, so leave, leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it all for you. I hope you enjoyed it and the music. The music all comes from bensound.com. The uh, they keep downloading that guy's music for free and then telling YouTube that they created it, which makes it file copyright strikes against anybody that's used the uh, music all over YouTube. But after a little while, they get it straightened out. So <laughs> most of the songs I use, I think, have been straightened out. Um, but yeah, leave your comments, let us know what you think. We appreciate everybody that's been using our uh, Amazon links. If you don't know about that, there's a link down below and on our website too. If you go to lionsarcade.com, uh, there are links to uh, items that we use in our repairs, like our wax and things like that on our website, and there are links to Amazon. Well, if you go to Amazon through one of our links, and then if you buy that item or any item uh, that you search for or whatever on Amazon after doing that, it gives us a, uh, a tip for sending you there. So it works out real good for us. And we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Uh, and make sure to check out my brother Donnie. If you don't know about that, my brother Donnie is literally my brother. Has a channel here on YouTube. If you like watching us work on these old pinball machines, you would probably enjoy watching he and I work on old buildings. We've got a couple old buildings that we've bought in a small town near here that we are fixing up to help revitalize their downtown area. So go check that out. I think this thing's turning out pretty cool. It looks fantastic. What do you think about my touch-up, John? Ah, uh, what do you think? Ah, uh, not bad. Flipper's a little crooked. Everybody always says, oh, you gotta line them up by that dot. Don't believe everything you hear, people. <laughs> 
the dot is useful to help line them up, but if you if you line it up with the dot, it's not like it is on the flyer. That's all I'm saying. If that's why you line them up, if that's how you line them up, how come they don't do it on the flyer? Hmm? Explain that to me. Uh, but you can get them even using the dot. So like on this one, you see that it's a little bit higher than center. On this one, it's a little bit higher than that, than center. So this one's just slightly lower than that one. We'll have to mess with that a little bit. But uh, we're getting there. All in all, I think it's coming together pretty nice. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think so far. I know what I think so far. I think it's fantastic. We'll see you on the next video.